Hi, this is Melinda with Melinda Howard Art. Thank you for joining me today. This is part two of creating watercolor bookmarks. In the first video, I showed you how to trim the bookmarks, cut out the corners, paint the background, and draw a simple Gerber daisy on the bookmark and add a ribbon. In this video, I will be showing you how I flatten the paper and get the warp out of it. And then I'm going to show you how to seal them using Dorland's Wax Medium. And then to finish them off, I found a perfect cellophane bag that will protect the bookmark for shipping or shipping a set of bookmarks or gifting. So let's go! Hey, while I trim some paper to make bookmarks, I want to share some really, really exciting news. On Friday, May 8th, I will be launching a new Patreon membership page. If you've enjoyed the content on this YouTube channel and you want to see even more, as a patron you would get exclusive bonus content, and then depending on the level or tier you choose, you would get free gifts from me and even one-on-one -on -one personal art instruction using Zoom. If you'd like to check it out, click on the Patreon link in the description box, and anyone who joins before the launch on Friday, the 8th of May, will receive a bookmark like the ones I've made on the last two videos. Go check out the first video at Patreon on the homepage, and you'll get a tour of my art studio, and on the 8th, I will be posting a bonus video on how to draw more of these flowers. I am just so excited. Go click on the link below and check it out. Now, on with finishing and sealing these bookmarks. Now these are completely dry and you can see that they're warped and, and not laying flat. I said in my last video that I didn't mind that, but actually I do. <laughs> and so I want to show you how I take care of that before I do any drawing on my bookmarks. And I could draw before I do this part, but I prefer having the flat surface to draw on. So I go ahead and do this step next. What I do is I iron um, these, and I want to show you a safe way to do it. It does take a while for them to flatten. So I iron them face down, then I turn them over and then put some heavy things on them and leave them just overnight works the best for me. I have a piece of paper down. I just wanna protect my surface. What I did was I got one of my husband's old t-shirts, which was super ugly. <laughs> Can you imagine wearing a t-shirt this color? It's like a walking highlighter. I've cut it up into two pieces and lay it flat on my piece of paper. And then laying these face down, don't want to get them too far apart because I want to lay something flat on them and I, I don't want to have a lot of space to have to cover. After I do that, I lay the second half of my t-shirt on top. And I just want to make sure that I didn't bend any or send them off flying somewhere. And then I take my iron. Now, I have this little craft iron that I got on Amazon a while back. Actually, it's been about a year, year or so ago. It has steam. It actually works really nice. It's a sunbeam, and I have it on max, 
which is for cotton. Now this paper is Arches. If, if I had a different kind of paper that wasn't 100% cotton, I'm not sure I would do this. But because it's 100% cotton paper, the t-shirt the is cotton. I feel really safe about doing this on Max. And I have it on Steam. And I even have a button that I can push to cause more steam. I'm just going to apply a, a gentle pressure down on my bookmarks. And you'll be able to see as I'm doing it, they, they kind of bend because of their shape. They kind of bend up on the ends. So I'll show you what I do to, to fix that as well. Now I'm going to blast it a little bit with, with some steam. to lift up my t-shirt and I'm going to turn these over because just the way that they're they're long they just want to curl upwards although the kind of waviness of them is over I don't want them to be curled like that so I'm turning them over so that they bow this way and I'm going to cover them again with this piece. And I'm going to put a, a drawing board on top of them. A well-used drawing board, but you don't have to have a well-used drawing board. Just something that is big enough to cover all of them and cover them evenly. And then I'm going to place some really heavy books on top. Kind of centered for the even pressure. And I'm going to find some other heavy things that will cause even more of a weight on them. All right, I have a basket and a pot full of rocks. And you may not have a basket full of rocks. I just happen to have them because I, I tried painting on some at one point. Haven't done it in a really long time. But uh, the basket and and little pot of rocks give a really nice extra weight to put on top of my bookmarks. Now I'm going to let this stay here till tomorrow to get nice and flat. My next step in completing these bookmarks is using this stuff by Jacquard called Dorland's Wax Medium. It seals your watercolor painting as far as not allowing any water to get to your um, watercolor and reactivate it and that's uh, pretty important to do for something that is not going to be framed behind glass. And I, I want to give a shout out to someone named Lee Murray who told me about this wax. Um, she is part of a Facebook group that I'm a part of. The Facebook group is called Watercolor Beginners and Beyond. I really love working with it. I love the look um, of my bookmarks once they're done. It gives not a shine at all. It's just kind of a, a really pretty luster to the watercolor paper without changing the look of the watercolor paper. I didn't really want to laminate uh, my bookmarks and just take away from the, the look of the paper. I just really wanted a little protection. I put it on with a finger. I used just one finger. <laughs> I don't get it all over my hands. I just use one finger because these are small and because I've used it several times now without any issues then that's that's a choice I'm making. Um, if you feel like it's not a good idea for you, then don't do it. Um, you can use a soft cloth. Um, make sure that it's a cloth that won't shed any fibers onto your watercolor paper because it will be fixed there forever if you do, if it gets fibers on there. That's one reason I use my finger to apply it onto these because I can see I know I have nothing on my fingers. I can see what I'm doing easier than having a, a whole cloth in my way. And I can feel 
where I've put it and where I may have missed. There's a lot of reasons I want to use my finger and I feel totally comfortable doing it. I've done it several times. I haven't had any problems, no issues. So that is completely up to you. The manufacturer doesn't say that there's anything in it that will bother your skin. Just make that decision yourself if you want to use your finger. I think that it's a good idea for me. I, I do it that way. And then I wash my hands immediately when I'm finished. But I just wanted to give that little disclaimer. It's totally fine using a soft cloth. Maybe an old t-shirt or a microfiber cloth would work good. But for me, I'm gonna use my finger. So you just get a little bit on your finger and just start rubbing it in. I will say as I'm doing this, that I was concerned about it when I first put it on, not about the watercolor per se, because I know that this is not water-based material, so I knew it wouldn't probably move my watercolors at all, but I was concerned a little bit about the ink. Uh, I wasn't sure how it would react to the ink that is on here. And you know what? It doesn't move at all. Nothing, nothing moves, nothing, I don't get anything that smears. If you're using the same kind of pen that I used when I drew these, which is the Uniball Signo pen, then you won't have any problems. If you use another kind of pen, you might want to experiment first on something that you don't care about. And that's that's uh, that's all I'll say about that. Now I'm putting it on not too thick. I'm getting just a little bit and rubbing it around, just making sure that I'm, I'm getting every uh, bit of it and doing it in a circular motion um, is what they recommend and and i think it's a good way to do it and don't you know don't add too much don't make it too thick uh, but you want to make sure that you've got good coverage if you use your finger you can feel where the wax is because it'll feel a little slicker and then the where it where you've missed will drag i don't put it on the back I want the back to be just the normal watercolor paper so that messages can be written on the back. You know, whoever receives it can make notes on the back if they want to, or you could add a scripture on the back if you want, just what, whatever you want to do. So if you, if you put the wax on the back, you won't be able to write on it later. Okay, so I'm done with that, and I'm going to set it aside. I've heard so many conflicting things about drying time. I'm giving it about 24 hours. Some people say a couple of hours. Others say 24 to 48 hours. 24 hours works really good. So after 24 hours, you're going to get a cloth and buff it out and then it'll have a really nice sheen to it and it will be waterproof. Okay, I've washed my hands, so I don't have any wax on my hands, and these are all of the bookmarks that I did yesterday. I've added um, the wax, and they are ready to be buffed. I have just another piece of that t-shirt that I cut up that was my husband's. It's a soft, clean cloth, and that's all you need. And you're just going to use circular motion and just buff it as as kind of like you do a car until it feels really really smooth where the wax is it has a little bit of resistance when you're rubbing but after you're done buffing it it feels super smooth and you just want to make sure that the wax is completely completely dry before you do this this step all right I really really love it you can you probably can't see on camera but it has just a little bit of a of a lustry really professional look to it it the, that wax really seems to 
really make the colors pop. Uh, another thing that um, will probably you'll probably wonder is um, about yellowing. And the, the product says that it's non-yellowing, so I don't have any, any problems using this on my bookmarks. And I'm gonna continue buffing out these, and then we're going to, um, I'm just gonna show you one more thing. The last thing that I want to show you are these cellophane bags. They're resealable. They're just like the sealed bags that I put my, my other artwork in and they fit perfectly. I got these on Amazon. They're a great size for what I've done here with the seven by two and a quarter bookmarks. You can actually even put sets of bookmarks in here. It's plenty big enough. It's just a nice finished way that you can present them don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and comment. I love hearing from you. Also, please check out my new Patreon page by clicking on the link below. And remember, you'll get a free bookmark for signing up. Or if you just want to check it out, there's a video on the homepage with a tour of my art studio. Again, thank you so much. Stay healthy and safe and have a super blessed day.